Good morning. About two dozen of us are getting ready to start the journey and learn more about the Mac Catcher extension from Hillsborough Road over to New Highway 96. Um, the 3.2, 3.3 mile covers the Harpeth River a couple of times, so it's got a, as we gather together here and try to journey the un uncompleted at this point here on the uh, 20th, I believe it's the 20th, 19th day of June. So we'll talk to you as we go through the journey. Thanks. Thank you. Let me start. My name's Mike Brown. I'm the regional director of operations. So um, uh, I'm over the construction maintenance division, the traffic management centers and the help trucks and whatnot. But just welcome all of y'all to this active construction project. This uh, project, the Prime Contractors Utah Construction Company, and they're out of Mississippi. Uh, what city? Madison. Ma Madison, Mississippi, but they are, have set up a, a regional office here in the Middle Tennessee area. They're a great contractor whatnot. This job went for approximately $45 million, uh, and about $16 million of that is the bridge that you're seeing. Uh, so I won't get into the details, but uh, we have uh, Mr. Sh Shane Hester, that is our Director of Project Development, he can kind of give you uh, an understanding of how the project was developed, the environmental issues and concerns that we are taking very seriously, and then uh, once he talks about the scope of the project and whatnot, then Mr. Shea Deason, he's my Regional Operations Engineer. He's overall construction and maintenance here in the 26 counties of Middle Tennessee. So Mr. Shea Deason, he can kind of get into the details of the construction project itself. So uh, without further ado, Mr. So, before Shane is yes. there, I want to... <laughs> 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 so, I want to yeah. just real, real quick, he's kind of asking us to come out. Yes, this is tour going today. I just, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out today, our elected officials and our uh, residents. Uh, I really want you to see what PDOT does for us, uh, not just on these big projects, $45 million projects, but I tell you, they are a great team to work with up there. Uh, fill in a pothole on Highway 100 within 24 hours when we get a call that it's damaged the cars and such. So putting signage up in Springfield for their battlefield. This team right here is focused on serving the public in Tennessee, and I am so proud uh, to work with them. And, and I tell you, it is a great group. I think I'm closer to this department than any other one up there. I don't know if it's called like a mini assignment, but, <laughs> but I tell you, again, you're seeing the positive impact of the Improve Act of this past few years. Ago. We have over $200 million worth of projects just in the 65th house district right now. They're, they're looking on the three year plan. We have Highway 100. Uh, one day will happen, excuse me, that's not only for your plan, but the Highway 31 from Duplex Road all the way up to Mac Hatcher is on the uh, three year plan. The interchange on I 65. Again, we appreciate what you're going to do, and also the construction folks is uh, doing this project right on the Thank you. I've got to give a brief overview of the design of the project and really kind of echo what Paul said. The city actually. Uh, they were responsible for the engineering and the right of way for this project. So, he got led the project for construction. It's a little over three miles, 3.1 miles. Uh, we've got uh, the bridge here that we're looking at is just a little bit over a half a mile. Uh, the river here actually makes a, almost a horseshoe bend, and of course, we're all in the floodplain here, so we had to span the floodplain. Um, we bought right of way for the full future build out. Uh, it's a four lane divided section, just like you come in on for this initial phase up the initial two lanes, but we are uh, doing the full build out at the major intersection. So we're cranking the roads, uh, Del Rio Pike, and State Route 96. So that's just the highlight of what the design is. So I'm Shay Dason, Regional Operations Engineer. Just give you a little more detail. Like you said, it's 3.2 miles, 16 million here is at the bridge. One unique factor we had with this one is the environmental factors we had, and also dealing with the landowners close by. Mr. Hainer, the property here has a lot of horse shows and didn't want to upset his horses and stuff so we've had to work around him so in doing that the bridge that you crossed is a bailey bridge and that's a military style bridge it's put in for emergency type forces but we can widen it out and strengthen it to bring in the heavy loads that we've had to do for the concrete and all that we brought in here and then uh this, this end here 
Yeah, it's yeah, temporary. a temporary structure that they put in just to get in and out. So that would come in, but that, I think it was 90 something days, I think we can't work with them. When Mr. Anderton's got four shows going, so we've had to work around that. And uh, we've got a good relationship going with him. Uh, Utah has been in here working really quick with us. We've got 18 piers that have been mainly constructed. We've got two abutments to go. They're working on the steel part of the uh, substructure to go up and build the caps and all to set. So right now the completion date on this is still November 21, but we're hoping to come in a little ahead of that. So it looks like things are progressing good, so hopefully we don't run any ma major issues. Uh, this does tie into the other side of 96 and the, uh, what's the property over there? The, the West Haven. West Haven, yeah. It does tie into an intersection with it, so it gives that. We've got uh, three box culverts on the main line through here that we've had to build in relation to that. And also at Del Rio, there's a box culvert and another box culvert extension on 96 that's having to be done. <coughs> so there's quite a bit of work going. Things are progressing really quick. And that's where we're at right now. So if you've got any detailed questions, we've got project supervisors, we've got contractors, personnel, we've got several people here can answer some of your questions. If there's anything else y'all would like to hear or not. How long is the bridge? The bridge is a little over 2,700 feet long, right at half a mile. Yep. Can you show kind of where it starts and stops? So just this side of the red light, about 200 foot, is the actual end of the bridge. And the other end of the bridge, if you can see where the dirt is piled up, will be the, that end of it. So it'll be one continuous bridge across here. Now this is the two lane section that's being built. It does have a multi-use trail on the side of it where pedestrians will be able to uh, walk along. And it's also got some lookouts built on the side of that so people can come in and look and see what's going on. And Mr. Anderton will always have access underneath this to the other part of his property and all of that. And you have yes, the sir. land purchase to add the additional two lanes and another we bridge. At That's some correct. Point in the, the property line ties in with the TVA power line that's here, and it goes about the sill fence you see on the other side. So the roadway that you're going to see built, of course, will line up with these uh, uh, piers that we've got built, and then the future roadway can be on this side. Now it will widen out to the five lane at Del Rio in '96 and back up at Hillsboro. So it will be widened out of those. Yes. What's the height of the bridge? Overall, it's off the ground. You're speaking, it varies anywhere from 35 foot down to about 12 foot. It's just going to vary in spots. I think what you'll see, you see where the steel is sticking out here. That's where the, the big cap will go. And it looks to be about, what is it, six foot? Nine, at that point, nine foot. Add in about another eight, eight foot. Foot. So, what, typically when we do bridge designs over water, we look at the 100 year flood, and we want the low beam, the low part of the bridge, to be about one foot above the 100 year flood. So that way, if you get a 100 year flood, the bridge doesn't catch debris or block the flow. This one's goofy because the water's flowing both directions under the same bridge. Yeah. It, you know, it goes around, so. What kind of buffer? up and ties in and there's a cul-de-sac there that's that cuts it off so there's no interchange with this actual road. Yeah. So the noise abatement, yeah. there's no there's no such there's not a noise ball that's included in the design. Okay. Like they said it, it is that road is cul de sac. Getting back to your question at uh, Old Charlotte Pike, Old Charlotte Pike will connect from the west side. It does not connect on the Franklin Christian School side. It will be cul-de-sac on that. So the Franklin Christian School will have to utilize uh, either Del Rio or back off of 96 to get to One more person or two more people I'd like to recognize, Brian Carroll and John Wardell back there. They have the toughest job at the state. They have to deal with 33 senators and 99 legislators. They're the liaison with PDOT and the General Assembly. And I, they're, they're in my speed dial. Let me assure you. Any other questions? You said November 21. What year? November of 2020. <laughs> not the 21st of November. 2020. Yes. Good point. Thank <laughs> you. Del Rio will be an at-grade crossing. It does have a 
guess the, it's got a lot of islands in there and directional, so when somebody gets into a turn lane, they can't go the wrong way. There's no opposing traffic. They will also be offset enough that the sight distance is not interfering. So it will be that with pedestrian crossings, plus you've got the multi-use trail that goes all the way through. So with the striping, the signals, and the directional crossing, all, you once traffic you get into your area, yes, sir, it will be a traffic signal. Speaking, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Do you know what the speed limit's going to be on this portion? I don't. Uh, 45, I think it is, I believe. 45, yes. Yeah. Our guide tell me it is 45. Can we change that? Just don't hold your phone while you're driving. <laughs> Speaking of the traffic signals, this project also has, for the full length, it has a fiber optic cable inside conduit. Now, what that will allow is all of your signals will be have uh, connectivity among them. They will, uh, and through your sense, uh, as, as um, the city develops and even as TDOT develops, your central software will be able to manage the, those traffic signals, you know, based on the demand and whatnot. And obviously it's a backbone that you all may one day tie into our traffic management center. Who's seen, who's seen the traffic cameras on the morning news? So that's all out of our TDOT complex, our traffic management center. Yeah. But just um, having, we're looking to have, you know, interconnectivity with cities so that we're sharing data. So you all will have that backbone on this, on this corridor. Any other questions or? This intersection at 96? Yes, sir. Have a signal? Traffic signal there as well. Will be a traffic signal there. And tie into Townsend at the West Haven, south of 96? Yes, it goes down just 13 to 13 to 1400 foot, just past 90, and ties into the first road that cuts into that uh, business development. Tony, do you know, are the signals, are they loop detected or video detected? Does anybody know? I believe it's loop. They're loop. The old school is loop wire in the in the asphalt. Your car pulls across that and it breaks that magnetic field and sends a signal to the light to give you green. In this new improved technology that you all have, you've got actual video cameras that are pointing at the lane and it's looking for movement. It's looking for movement to call for green back at the signal. So it does a better job than yes. yeah. Hey, the property owner asked that we move this car here out of the roadway. Okay. Yes, that's that's right. Right. So, so we're working with them daily, so you can see how that goes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we aim to please. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. So the south end that's down on 96, are, they, are you going to be start construction down there sometime soon to start going to meet in the middle? How does that, how's that going to work? Yeah, we're working right now on the utility work, and it's going to be born across the road and taking care of that right now. And they're up to there now with that, so you should start seeing some more with that. Uh, there is a box culvert that does have to be extended and another barrel or two added, so there will be some shifts in there temporarily in that. So that will be starting here in the near future. Matt, I don't know if we've got an exact time frame. Guys, y'all know exact time frame when he's starting those yet? Is he set down a schedule? They gotta get their utility work on the first. Okay. So once the utility completes, then you will uh, see I, the work on I would presume that the bridge is a critical path out on the project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and many years ago, we let contracts where we relied on the utility company to do their thing, to get moved or whatnot. Well, now we have available the, for the utility remo uh, relocation contracts to be let with the construction project so the general contractor has full control and he's, uh, we, we pay him to relocate those. So it, it just makes for a better and uh, smoother uh, transition and uh, scope and quick construction. Any other questions? We'll leave here. We'll drive back through the subdivision and we'll come out over at Del Rio and let you see the intersection there. Y'all want to ride on and see that?
so this is Del Rio Pike. We are interchanging at that grade intersection right here. There will be a traffic signal here. Also, we are running the uh, uh, gas line and the water lines coming through to this point. We'll be running along the job the whole entire way, which we've got the multi-use path. We'll be on the other side. Again, this interchange will be built out for the full function interchange for all lanes for future and that, and then they'll taper back in on both ends to go back to a two lane when we get done. But as you can see down here on the north end, we are, we got a precast box covered. Part of it's already been set. They're working on that now. So that gets the drainage through so we can keep everything going. The grade changes will be basically the same elevation you see right here. This is the finished grade, except for, of course, our rock and our asphalt's got to come up on top of it. But this gives you a general idea. This will be one of the, I guess, the only major interchange we've got in the middle of this project. It's three miles uh, stretch that we're building. And of course, we just come from the bridge. You can see it right over there where we just left from. And then this is about the halfway point through the job, because just around the curve here, and back you can see 96 is just the other side of the trees. We'll carry you around there and show you that also. But do you have any questions or specifics you want to know here at this one, or any details? If not, we'll move on to the next one, but I wanted you at least to get out and see the major interchange and what is involved here. Real quick, just, I thought you might be interested. We've got, we have decisions when we make the design a road. You know, do, you, do you build a road to where you have a lot of development along it, or do you build it to have a lot of movement of traffic? And this road here is kind of a, we just kind of split the difference. And there's no driveways on this road, but there's intersections and public roads. And so that way we, it's that balance between uh, being able to move traffic one of the things that the city leaders talked about was they wanted a facility that could move traffic from the west side back over to the east side. Uh, but we also worked with the city in looking at how we manage that access control, where the local roads come in, and where the city can look at how can they maximize uh, benefit to the community. So, so that's part of the balance of work. Where it's not purely engineering, it's also looking at what are the needs of the community. And that balance between uh, access to the facility and, and then moving traffic is one of the main considerations that was put together in the project. Just thought that you talk about it. All right, any other questions or comments? Anybody? All right, so we'll, we'll go back down Del Rio, we'll turn right on to Old Charlotte, and ease into the, uh, I think it's Franklin Christian School, I believe the name of it. We'll pull in at that and we'll get out there and look at some more so you can at least see the general alignment where things are going through there. Okay? in right along here and 96 is you can see the cars traveling up there so there's the 96 section and then the subdivision on the other side that we will be tying in with and you can also see the gas line is already welded and in place over there and they're getting ready to drop it into the ground and bury it in direction of four so this gives you the idea of where it's at now old chart like we talked about before it kind of intersects at an angle or a skew it's going to be brought in at 90 degrees and you'll be able to access it from the west side but the way we came in now it will be a cul-de-sac right here and only the traffic coming in out of this school will be the last it and it'll be turning around there and headed back out so that kind of gives you a general idea again the road does widen back out to about a five to lane area as it goes in along with 96 will be multi-lanes with uh, several turning lanes traffic signal and everything else and the multi-use path does tie in with the development up here and also just the multi-use path that continues on through will cross over Hillsboro Pike and tie in at the next road where the multi-use path is on, on up on uh, across Hillsboro Road at the next uh, red light that's up right now. So the multi-use path will be and How far will the five lanes go into West Haven? It Tentatively right now it's only designed to have 1,300 foot built. It will be built to the next interchange that ties in. There's future, I believe right away has been purchased to go further. What, did Townsend? Yes, it goes to Townsend. That's the name of the road, okay. yes. So it will tie in with Townsend. So that's 
So that they'll be able to come out and use that light there and tie in with this and where you're at. So we've had a good relationship with the Christian School here, working with them. They've worked with us real well. We're trying to keep all traffic off of them as much as possible, to make sure, especially once school's in, we will limit anything that's coming in and out. And Matt McQueen is with uh, Utah here. He might give you a little information about how many people you got working and some stuff. I thought you might want to share that with us so the yeah, public sure. knows what's going on. Sure, yeah. I think uh, so. We do a safety orientation for everybody that we hire and subcontractors. Uh, I think to date we've orientated about 120 people have come in to work on the project at one time. Uh, on e any given day, we've got about 50 to 60 employees out here between concrete crews, pipe crews, earthwork crews, just depends on what. Uh, what is going on in the weather, of course. Uh, today, it's it's kind of limited. Uh, we had a pretty good rain event last night. It's kind of limited our work activity today. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's coming along nicely. We're, we're pleased with the progress so far and uh, hope to keep it on track. They've got several people staying in your local hotels and businesses and everything else, so there's a, they're bringing in a pretty good boost to your economy, I hope. <laughs> sure. Especially with purchasing materials and all that we've got. So. Again, I appreciate everybody taking the time this morning to see this. Uh, it's uh, so important to our community. Again, I just want to thank TDOT, Utah, and the uh, and the folks, the elected officials that have been here for years that made this happen. Okay, I mean, it's just uh, we appreciate what y'all do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. It's getting a little hot, isn't it? It's that's what you speak in here, 100 degrees. So we're at the conclusion of the. Um, Mac Hatcher extension field trip we took today and with us is Paul Deggs, the chief engineer for TDOT, Tennessee Department of Transportation. And I'm going to let Paul kind of go over some of the things he said earlier to the entire group. Paul, tell us a little bit about uh, the length and uh, the time involved and, and uh, the commitment that was uh, put in uh, under the improved act. Sure. So, you know, we're here on the Mackatcher Parkway extension. The project is uh, a project we've worked very closely with the city of Franklin and people of Williamson County to come up with a design that kind of meets their needs. So it's a little over a three mile project that goes from connecting the uh, US 431 Hillsborough Road over to just south of Highway 96 on the west side of Franklin. We're building uh, two lanes of a, of a future four-lane facility, very similar to what we've done with a lot of Mac Hatcher and other parts of the city. So I think the people in the community will kind of get a have a good understanding of how we're approaching the project. Uh, about $45 million project. Uh, it's a limited access facility, so there's no driveways along it. So, so uh, it's going to prioritize the movement of traffic. And that's kind of what has been uh, what we've been hearing in the community that they want a way to kind of get around town expeditiously. Um, one of the opportunities that pr was presented to us here, the uh, passage of the Improve Act did free the money up to allow us to get this project quicker, and so uh, it did accelerate the, the delivery of the project. And so we're real, real pleased. It's got a, a November of 2021 completion date on it. Uh, this type of facility, I, I don't see any issues that typically that would be a problem to uh, to not meet that date. About 75% of our project meets those uh, original completion dates. Paul, uh, one of the things that st stood out to me earlier in the remarks that was made by one of the field supervisors was the length of that bridge and the cost of that bridge uh, that we're having to put in to go over the harbor really twice, where it goes one way and comes back the other. Right. You know, in uh, you know, rivers are, you know, they're obstacles to, to how a community can grow. I know the people of Franklin have a pretty good understanding how the Harper River impacts things, and so the the bridge is 2,700 feet long. It's got about a 16 million dollar price tag. It is the critical path issue on the project. So uh, you know, some people might wonder, well, why aren't you doing a whole lot over on the Highway 96 end? Well. If we could hurry up and finish that piece of it, but the road wouldn't be done until we got the bridge done. So from a from a dollars and cents standpoint, it makes sense to work on the critical path items first. And so again, uh, you know, a, a, a third to a half of the, the cost of the project. It's a it's a big bridge. 
and uh, it'll have a, a pedestrian path with some lookouts on it. So it'll be a cool structure when it's done. I think people enjoy it. So we appreciate the tour today, having your people here, the city, other elected officials to kind of come and explain so the people would have a better understanding. So look for somewhere around November 2021. We ought to have this thing open up, hopefully a little earlier. Hope so. Hope Thanks, so. Paul.